Hey. Welcome to May 2021. Ask us anything live Q&A. Correct. Yay. <laughs> Hello, puppy dog. She's like, hey, why, who are you talking to? What you do when you see her? Oh, isn't she so She's cute. Care? Off, off. Good girl. She's going to wonder why we're talking. Like, who are you talking to? What's going on? She Share to, with me. Yeah, see, she wants to be part of the action. So first thing we have to tell you about is our construction project that we have right. going on. I know you can barely see it up there in the top corner of the camera, but if you open our pantry, you will see, I think you'll be able to see, that what we have in here is a ladder. Can you see it? Oh, there it is. See, we have a ladder. We took everything out of the pantry, and Russ is redoing it because, hey, little dog, get out of the way. Um, this whole section up here was not usable space because it had a top shelf and then all the space up above it you couldn't like you couldn't stack stuff up there oh, you yeah, like three foot, yeah. and so what we've decided to do is open up the top we're going to put sliding doors in there and put um kind of a shelf right at that level so we can use that space for storing stuff we rarely use and then he's going to put wood shelves that don't sag right. in here. And apparently a drawer at the bottom, like a shelf. And so it's going to be shelf a shelf, but a shelf that slides, that slides out. out. At the bottom, so you can reach all the stuff in the very bottom yeah. without like getting down on your hands and knees. Yeah. Should be fun when it's all done. So that is our current construction project. Now you might wonder, well, what happened to all your staples, your pantry staples? They're on the dining room table. Right. Which is not ideal. It's a temporary home. But that's where they are right now. So. That is what we have going on. We have our construction project that Russ is working on. And love him to death, he is notoriously horrible at estimating how long things take to happen. <laughs> I am. Um, I have to admit it. Like I, I thought this would be boom, boom, done. But it's, well, you know, I mean, the things I guess I don't think about is putting the spackle. And there's more than one coat of spackle that has to go on because you're basically adding a wall. You're taking away a wall, whatever. And so you have to let it dry, dry yeah. and so there's all that time. Yeah. But I did the painting. So the green that's in there, as you can tell, is a little bit darker green than the, the actual kitchen is. And I, so that I did the painting. And that is some oops paint that we got, which right. oops paint is when you go to big stores like Home, Lo Home Depot or Lowe's. I almost said Home Lowe's. Um, that they when they mix paint and it comes out, the color's not right for whatever, there's something off about it, then that's called oops paint and they sell it, you know, real cheap. So. Right. I have lots of cans of paint that I've picked up, and I'm and like, that, oh, maybe I'll use that. That color's going to look really nice against white shelves. Yeah, so. I was concerned when we first put it in there that it was going to look too close to the green that's in the kitchen, and that it was going to look like we just made a mistake, but I don't think so. I think it's yeah. dark enough that it's going to Oh, you can see. Just look at it in the, in the Yeah, camera. in the camera, you can tell yeah. that the wall here is the green that the kitchen is, which doesn't look as green, I think, on camera as it really is, and then that is a little bit darker. So anyway, it has nothing to do with eating plant based. No, it doesn't. It's well, the, just what we have just going sharing. on in our lives. Just, just, just to share with you what's going on right now. So, all right, let's get on with. Let's stuff. get on with the show. Did you have anything you want to say before I get started? Uh, just to mention that we just completed a study that was kind of interesting. Uh, oh, that yeah, we did. Uh, I guess I don't know. I call it a meditation study, but I don't know if that's true. With the local university, University of Delaware. So it was a two-week thing that we did. We participated and finished yesterday. So that was interesting. It was so my first study. First study he's ever done. Now, right. obviously, because I have a degree in psychology, I've participated in lots and lots and lots of research studies, done my own, been a participant in them. Mm -hmm. So, but it was interesting, but he did it with me. I was like, come along, try yeah. this out. I said, sure, why not? And I've got another one that I'm doing right now that's about um, uncertainty that's running, started last week and is running for three weeks. So I'm doing that one. That one's online. It's with a yeah. university in, I think, in London somewhere. Yeah. So anyway, now we're going to start talking. Right. Um, the first thing I wanted to mention is that on Netflix there is a show now called Sea Spiracy. It's by the makers of Cowspiracy. Right. We have not watched it because it's too heartbreaking for us or mm -hmm. for me. I guess you could watch it. I could probably know. watch it, but not that I want but to. But I haven't watched all of Cowspiracy either for the same reason. It's just too emotionally stressful oh. for me. But if you have, if you need motivation not to eat fish. There you go. That's, I mean, that's just it. If you need the motivation not to eat, you know, animal products or cows or whatever, watch that. Because, I mean, it is it's just, it's nasty. It's, yeah. it's unfortunate. So, sea spiracy, um, if you are still a fish eater or you know someone who is a fish eater, I recommend that you uh, watch it. It is going to cause cognitive dissonance for you. If you are eating those kind of things, I think it's going to be... Disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard for you. But yeah. Sea Spiracy on Netflix, wanted to mention that. Do check it out. 
Um, and if you do, I would love to hear what you think of it. Because like I said, I know I can't watch it. It's, right. And we don't eat fish anyway, so I'm like, I don't, I don't need to watch it. I don't need the heartbreak. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to let you know that a New Jersey doctor has successfully gotten the Burger King in her hospital closed. She, nice. um, yeah, she was uh, uh, doing a whole bunch of work saying, look, why are we serving basic, basically death food in a hospital? That doesn't make any sense. We need to stop. And she was able to su successfully get it closed. And it, um, it was, that was told um, on the podcast that Neil Bernard, doctor, I couldn't think, Dr. Neil Bernard does. He talked about how she had been able to do it. So it is possible. It is possible for hospitals to make a difference. It's just, it's, it's mind blowing to me that hospitals feed their patients such poor food, such, you know, food that's just health, as far as health goes, bad for you to eat. Um, right. and, these, and then they're trying to get people to recuperate. That's why we've always said it, get yourself out of the hospital as soon as possible. You don't want to be in there. Yes, don't be one of those people that want to stay the extra day. Do be the opposite. Right. If it's out. safe for you to get out, get out. If it's not safe, then don't. But if it's safe... Right. They're good for what they're meant to be, which is trauma centers. But if right. you're not in trauma, don't be there. Right. All right, so one of the questions that I got, or a comment I got, this wasn't really a question so much as, um, I got an email talking about how they were just completely overwhelmed by all the weird ingredients that um, you know are, are in recipes, plant-based recipes, and they just were frustrated because they're like, there's so many things I don't know, I don't recognize. And the thing I have to say to you is, I feel you, because I feel the same way. There are some times where I look at recipes on some of these websites, like Forks Over Knives, I looked at one, yesterday that I was like, oh, maybe that'll be it. There were like five things on there that I'm like, I don't even know what that is. We're gonna go look for it. <laughs> and and sometimes there, sometimes there are things where I'm like, okay, it's one thing, let me go figure out what it is and try it. And that's the way that I have approached plant-based eating is I started out with all the spices and the foods and the things that I recognized and I just found things I can make with that. Mm. First of all, because it was stuff my taste buds recognized, but secondly, because it didn't overwhelm my brain. And then I started saying, okay, I'm gonna try one new thing. And not like I'm gonna look at a recipe and make 57 things, I'm one. And when I got Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Die, he has a lot, and his cookbook has a lot of things that I'm like, I don't know what that is. I don't know how to use that. So, go ahead. No, what I was gonna say is, so for me, these plant-based recipes that have all these different ingredients in it's because they're trying to, to get you exposed to all these different nutrients. Um, and a lot of times they'll pick a, a, a nutrient that they're using. Or a, well, sometimes they're trying to create tastes that are... Taste as well. Animal I'm, I'm, like I said, but for me, I feel like they're trying to get you introduced to other ways to get nutrients. But you don't need all these different ways to get nutrients, in my opinion. Mm. You know, just the standard plant-based foods that we eat are going to give you way more nutrients than you need. So, just a thought. Yeah, so I... But I guess the point that I'm making is I understand it because I had the same thing early on where I was just like, I don't know what these foods are. I don't know how to use them. I don't. So if you run across a recipe that you're like, I don't know what that is. If you're not feeling it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like you have to, because I don't, I just don't. There are, so there are things I have added. I think we did um, a, a live once where we talked about different things that we've added, things like mm -hmm. miso. I never used miso before we went plant-based, but now I have it in the house because <coughs> um, I use it in my, Hummus, mm. that I, and yeah. I do I do put it in soups because it gives an umami flavor. Mm. So I do use it in soups sometimes. But and you so, like it. And, and you, yeah, yeah, yeah I do. So we have we have miso in the house. A um, few other things. Cumin was one that I never mm. cooked with before. You would think I did. I grew up in California, Mexican mm. food, but now I use cumin all the time. Have it in everything. We didn't use tahini prior, did we? Nope, didn't use tahini prior. Which is really great. I mean, yeah, we use that and a lot. Have it in salad dressing. It goes in the in our hummus. Uh -huh. Do that. Um, what else? There's a couple of, oh, there's black cumin, which is not actually cumin, it's something else, but that's one I recently added within the last several months. I, I would try it. I really like it. I th feel like it adds kind of a citrusy flavor. I like it, so now we use it. So I would say if you find a recipe that you're like, okay, this looks like it'll be good. I understand most of it. There's one ingredient that I, I is new to me. Fine, go research that ingredient pick it up somewhere, order it online, whatever, get it, try it. Have I had situations where I've gotten one, especially there's different spices where I'm like, mm, I don't think that's gonna be a thing for us. Yes, I have one 
Like what is the one that tastes like dirt? What is that? Oh, that one is um, sage. We sage. Aren't We're not handling that. We're not fans of sage. No, but there's this one. So this isn't even written in English. But this is one that I got because I found it. Um, uh, it was in a recipe somewhere, and I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds like... And the person who made the recipe was raving about it. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'll try it. Tiny, itty-bitty little bottle. I've used most of it, but mostly because I just bury it and stuff. I don't care for it. So you are going to have that happen. Don't get discouraged. I can talk. Hold on. Don't get discouraged by, you know, you try something and you're like, yeah, no. Because like he said, sage. If I put too much sage in something, it tastes like dirt and we don't eat it. Right. And we, you know, we had to learn that by me trying it and realizing, nope. There's a lot of things, parsley, oregano, cilantro, thyme. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that you can put kind of just indiscriminately dump into things sage is not one of them no so yeah i get it i understand it just try to find things that you do recognize that you can use um and don't don't try to be too fancy i think that's another thing that these a lot of these websites and i see it on forks over knives i see it on the mcdougall site i see it on engine two like all of the ones where i get recipes Sometimes they're just too fancy. They're too fancy. They're trying to make meals that aren't go too easy to make, throw it together, feed your family meals. And they and look I, pretty in a magazine after you spend hours and hours making them, but then you don't actually want to eat it because it's like, yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. Right. So that I guess don't get too wrapped up. Unless you're a huge foodie and you like that, right. don't get wrapped up in it. I, know, I don't. I mean, we throw food together all the time. So anyway, yeah. Um, another comment, this is a comment that came on Facebook. It said, I wish I had your willpower. So I'm going to mm. let you in on a secret. I have terrible willpower. Mm. I really, really do. If we go to Costco, oh, so this is a funny story. Ugh. We went to Costco on a fasting day. So it would have been the Thursday before we were expecting to have friends over for the weekend for dinner. And we use those two things as an excuse to end up with what four or five bags, bags of, of like chips and things chips like and crackers they're all plant-based they plant no, doesn't they're mean they were healthy that's not fair they were vegan they were vegan right <laughs> so we ended up with all these bags of junk food basically well they would have been health food for other people but junk food for us, us yeah. in the house for dips and whatever things that we were, and i'm like guess what they all got eaten yeah and unfortunately it's not like they were all gone because friends came over there was plenty I mean, around. our friends did help us. Yes, but... they did, but not enough. So, I don't have, like, people look at me and they're like, oh my goodness, you have such great willpower. I think you have better willpower than I do. I think that's true, but I think that's because of my bodybuilding background. I mean, I used to have to go on such strict diets that it just became second nature to me. For me, if it's in the house, I'm probably going to eat it. Mm. And so what I have to do is not have it in the house. That's, that's just the bottom line. And if I'm going to have it in the house, I have to realize it's going to get eaten. There's no like having in the house and, and you know, whatever it's going to get eaten. Even mm. if I put it in the freezer, like that's why they make microwaves. Yeah. You can it it, it only delays the process slightly. <laughs> right. Although it does, I guess, help in that if it's in the freezer, you can't pick on it. Right. Like you can't just see it and be like, Oh, I'll have like, some of that. Oh, I'll have some of that. Like chips. If you're making lunch and you have chips, chips are a good thing to snack on while you're making lunch, which is not a good idea. No, I actually fuss at him when he, and when I, he puts them over here when we're making lunch over here. So you have to at least walk a couple of steps. Make it a little effort. When, Cause it, it helps with the cognitiveness of it, I guess, because if it's just right there, you can just grab it and eat it. Whereas if it's over here, you have to consciously walk over there. So that helps. Yeah. But Please don't beat yourself up for not having willpower because willpower isn't a thing, especially at the end of the day when you're exhausted. We've talked about that before that you can get willpower fatigue and all day, every day, you're making decisions that use your willpower. You know, not screaming at the guy that isn't going at the, at the light when it turns green, not raising your voice at the dog that, you know, when she barks, so mm -hmm. not screaming at your kids and not smacking your husband, all of that stuff uses willpower and at the end of the night is when your your willpower fatigued you just don't have it and that's when if it's in the house you're going to eat it trust me i know happens to me too so do yourself a favor don't have it in the house and don't try to rely on your willpower to to make yourself healthy that's just not going to be a viable option 
Oh, I wanted to follow up on, I think it was two months ago I talked to you about drinking two cups of cold water um, in, in a, like a short period helps you lose weight. And I told you, okay, I'm going to try it. Um, and no more than three, I have to reiterate, no more than three cups of water in a, in a one hour period because that's the maximum that your kidneys can actually process. You can actually really cause some serious damage to yourself if you drink more water than that in a short period of time. So it's hard to do. That's what I can tell you. I've been trying to do it, trying to figure out like how can I, how can I drink and drinking two cups of water like at one time, like pick up your glass and drink two cups of water is really tough. I found it to be very challenging. I mean, I can drink water. I drink a lot of water on a regular basis, but two cups at, in like two minutes or whatever, really challenging. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to be really great for weight loss because it kind of boosts your body's me metabolism and stuff, especially if you do it right before meals. And I, you know, Dr. Greger has a whole series on it. If you can do it, yay to you more power to you because that's pretty impressive mm -hmm. i haven't been able to do it consistently to get myself to drink two cups of water like just down it at any consistent basis hasn't Which happened is, i guess about that much water right no that's maybe a cup of water is it really yeah hold on we will put we it will we'll put we'll it to put the it test the we'll, we'll show you because i have i have a measuring cup. so hold on i'm gonna get two cups of water and then should we put it in a what size glass should we put it in? You put it in your glass? Did you empty it for that reason? All right. Here you go. So this is a two cup measuring cup, which is 16 ounces of water. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. So a full glass. That glass, very full. Oh, hold it up. They can't see it. It's all the way full to the very top right here. So. Chug that. Yeah, and that's the thing, right, is that chugging that much water is tough. Which is, what did you use to fill it? The, the water pitcher. Oh, cool, so I can drink it. You this. can drink it, yes. So, anyway, just wanted to circle back to that because I know I told you when we talked about it originally that I would let you know how it went. It's hard. Mm. I wish it was easier, uh, easier to do. It also makes you pee a lot. <laughs> So anyway, but that's if you that. work behind the desk, it's maybe not a bad thing. It forces you to get up a lot. It does. Yeah. I mean, but so even though, so I drink, I use a glass this size and I fill it and then I drink it over the course of however long it takes me to drink it. And it does make me get up to go to the bathroom and to refill my glass. Right. So it's not that I'm not staying hydrated. I'm just not getting the weight loss benefits. Right. Yeah. You're, which, not, you're not doing the chugging thing. Right. Which I want to, but it doesn't work. All right, um, I came across some foods for eye health that I thought might, you might find interesting, so I just jotted them down. Um, so if you want your eyes to be healthy, I know for me, being on the computer as much as I am, my eyes definitely are not what they once were. So eye health is always a good thing. So here are some foods for eye health. Tomatoes, which incidentally are on the Dirty Dozen, get them organic. Yeah, yeah, Sweet good. potatoes, avocado, mm. carrots, isn't it interesting? I thought carrots weren't, but apparently carrots are. I always thought carrots were, and when we read, I thought that, that they weren't that it, great. Well, it's not the top food, but... Not the top one, yeah. Carrots, asparagus, which are fresh and in season right now. If you can get fresh asparagus, it's amazing stuff. Grapefruit, mm. it's a good one. Lentils, flaxseed, yay for flaxseed. Flaxseed, we take it every day. You know we get it every day in our oatmeal. Spinach. Black-eyed peas, broccoli, and bok choy. My neighbor bok just choy. gave us a whole bunch of bok choy. I planted some this year, and it fizzled. It got this big and died on me. Huh. I think that the soil I put it in wasn't great. I think oh, really? that I could... I, oh, you put it in the pot? I put it in one of the pots oh, okay. that had something in it last year, and I think the soil didn't have enough nutrients for it. So I think that's what happened for me. So if you're looking for... um. You know, things that are good from your eyes. All of those are really good, easy foods to eat. Recognizable, no weird ingredients in there. Mm -hmm. um, lentils are obviously uh, a type of bean, so you get beans. All right. Oh, I wanted to share with you, we are trying to eat quinoa. I don't know what our drama is. Yeah. We like quinoa and we don't seem to eat it. So we went to his mother's over the weekend yes. and I made um, taco, made taco stuff with quinoa was the base of it. It was basically quinoa, uh, spices, onions, <coughs> bless you, um, black beans. I was going to put carrots in it, but we didn't have any. What else did I put in there? I don't 
I see you cooking, huh? I don't know. Anyway, made it was really good. So, yeah, quinoa, great food, healthy food, good for yeah, you. It's I don't know why we don't eat more of it. We have it. We should be eating it. We need to be. We yeah. have it. Costco carries yeah. it. Incidentally, it's the first time my mom's ever had tacos. Isn't that is, not the strangest which is thing? Phenomenal. Yeah. How is that a thing that she had? She literally said to me, oh, I've never had these before. And I thought she meant because I made fresh tortillas. I thought she'd never had fresh tortillas. No, she said she'd never eaten tacos, yeah. which blows my mind. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, well. Now she has. I mean, I brought burritos up there before, but yeah. anyway. Well, taco. So that was, that was fun. Um, I also came across an article that was talking about the symptoms of B12 deficiency. Mm. And you know, we've said this over and over. I feel like we harp on it. I don't care what diet you're on. I don't care what you're eating. Take a B12 supplement. Ta -da. Take it. Take it. Especially double time if you are vegan or plant 100% plant-based because you can get B12 from animals because they, they do give animals B12 Shots, supplements. Yeah. They do supplement them. And animals have access to the bacteria that makes B12. We don't. We live in a very sterile mm -hmm. environment. Well, you know, we don't drink dirty water, thank goodness. Right. We clean our vegetables. We don't eat them right We're from not the eating soil. So take B12. But here's the issue with um, B12 deficiency. It basically looks like everything. They're, like we Literally, what isn't a B12 deficiency um, Symptom. Symptom. Yeah, thank you. Couldn't think of the word. Symptom. Literally everything. I actually know someone who was diagnosed with B12 deficiency and they were testing him for cancer because they couldn't figure out what was going on with him. So here are some symptoms. I just, you know, wrote down a bunch of them that I came across. But pretty much, if something's wrong with you, take some B12. It might make it better. Abdominal distension, chronic diarrhea, shortness of breath, red, painful feet, Parkinson's-like symptoms, Skin darkening, neurological symptoms, numb, numbness, tingling, muscle cramps, blindness, dizziness, cognitive disturbances, difficulty walking, erectile dysfunction, fatigue, depression, mania, delirium, psychosis, visual hallucinations, coma, organ failure. So there you go. So pretty much. If you have a symptom. If you have, if, if something's wrong with you and you aren't taking B12, take some. Just take some. It's not hard. It's not bad for you. You can't overdose on it. It's cheap. Take it. Yep. We take it twice a week, right? We do. We take it twice a week. We take... Uh... I'll show you again what we take. I'm telling you, take B12. I know I'm being a nag. Do it anyway. 2,500 micrograms twice a week. What kind is it? This is Nature's Bounty. No, what's that? It's mito... Which one is it? This word. Oh, yeah. Um, it is... You want the mice glasses? Meth... Methyl... Methylcholamine. There's different kinds of, of B12 that you can get. Let me see your glasses. <laughs> I really think that's what it is. So it's M E T H Y L C O B A L A M I N. Methylcholamine. <laughs> if you search on the website for B12, we did a whole live about the different kinds of B12 and whatever. But really, you don't even have to do that. Just go get some, take it. Mm -hmm. It's good for you. It's mandatory. All right, so that's that. What else do I have? Oh, so I got a question. I, this whole note, set of notes is about um, arthritis. How am I doing on time? Oh, really? Oh my goodness, I'm almost at a half hour. Okay, I'm gonna hurry. I wanna tell you about, um, about arthritis because I did get a, get a question. I know we've talked about arthritis, different types of arthritis, but I recently came across this article by Dr. McDougall. Now remember, McDougal is hardcore. Yes. He is staunch and hardcore, and he will call you stupid to your face. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, arthritis, all kinds of arthritis, including lupus, are just inflammation of the joint. That's it. That's what arthritis means. It means you have inflammation in your joint or joints, plural. So there's two kinds, denigrative and, no, and inflammatory. I can't even say it. I know the word. I know what it means, but I can't. Degradation. So it's degradative. Yeah, degradative. Yes. There we go. Degradative. I can talk. Okay. And and just plain inflammatory. So degradative obviously means that the joint is degrading. It's, ca it's causing a problem. And inflammatory means the joint is just inflamed. Now, chronic inflammation will cause a problem in your joints. It can cause damage. So 
you can end up with permanent damage over years and years and years of having inflammation in your joints. So when you have, uh, doctors consider arthritis to be kind of a chronic, ongoing, de degenerative, degenerative, <laughs> degenerative, Thank you. degenerative, I can say it, um, disease. And there's no cause and no treatment is basically they can treat the pain and they can give you anti-inflammatory drugs, but really, nah, is what they're going to say. Nah, can't help you. So Dr. McDougall says it is not genetic and it is not inevitable. It's not, a, it's not about age. Like you just don't, everybody doesn't just get arthritis as they age. It's not a thing. So interestingly, the article, the article I read is very long and very scientific, but he talks also about how le leaky gut is also caused by inflammation. And so inflammation causes leaky gut and leaky gut causes inflammation and you end up with this reinforcing circular problem um, with, the, with this kind of thing. He says that fasting is the fastest way to reduce inflammation. And what he was talking about in it, they were, some of them were talking about seven and 14 day fast. Do not do that no. unless you are under a doctor's care. That is not a good idea. But fast, short term fasting can help, but long term fasting was what they were talking about specifically. Gotta drink some water. All right. Um. It does so fasting does work if if you're haven't caused a lot of damage already. I mean, it'll reduce the inflammation regardless. But if you've already caused a lot of damage to your joints, fasting isn't going to fix the damage that's been caused. But if you haven't caused damage, you can stop it. Um, vegan diet or you know plant based diet definitely helps with inflammation unless it's very high in vegetable oils because so, uh, they're shown to damage. Um, intestinal integrity as well. So that's added oils. That's right. not the oils naturally in vegetables. No, vegetable oils. So stuff that comes in a bottle. If mm -hmm. it's high in oil, you're going to have um, problems with inflammation because it's the, the fat, apparently. And it doesn't matter. I have more notes further on that talk about um, the different kinds of fat. So drugs to treat arthritic. This is it. This was interesting to me. Drugs, that are, drugs to treat arthritis are toxic to your gut lining. Mm, nice. So long-term use of Advil, Motrin, Naproxen, et cetera, are bad and pro prolonged use because they damage your gut. So you're taking something to re reduce inflammation, but you're damaging your gut, with in which increases inflammation. Yeah, so, so break something else to fix something. Like, you know, fix this, but break that. Oh, I mean, it's pretty common that that stuff, you know that stuff's bad for your gut. So yeah. if you are on a long a long term dosage of Advil, Motrin, or Naproxen, you may be causing damage to your gut lining. So just something to be aware of. I did I learned that, did not know that. So it's always good for me to learn things. So um, he also make, he McDougal also makes the point that just suppressing the immune response is treating the symptom, not the problem. So if your body is having an unnatural immune response, figure out what it's responding to and stop doing that. Don't just try to suppress the immune response system because that's not the problem, that's the symptom. We talk a lot about that in plant-based eating that medical doctors seem to want to treat want to treat symptoms rather than find the problem. Cross, yeah. yeah. Um, the standard American diet does not provide enough antioxidants to deal with the free radicals that take up in joint tissue. So, I mean, antioxidants are good, and if you're not, if you're eating the standard American diet, yeah, then it's not surprising that you get arthritis because you don't have enough antioxidants to offset the free radicals from the diet. So, an interesting, interesting point. So he says that um, fasting to clear your system out and then doing food challenges is a really good way to tell kind of what causes inflammation in your body. Um, he said that really high likelihood candidates for causing inflammation are milk, beef, corn, egg, and wheat. Hmm. So things to be aware of. And we've talked before about how corn and wheat, it could be because of the amount of Roundup in them. It may not actually be. So you may be able, if you use um, organic yeah. or you know older, older kinds of grains and We're stuff, it yourself. <laughs> you might be okay with it, but... That again takes a challenge. Can can you do organic? Can you as opposed to just wheat or you know, whatever? So that's a whole separate thing. So you want to. So.
So it, he said it can take up to three months to see a benefit if you're not fasting. If you just start cutting out foods, it can take a long time for your body to, to clear stuff out. So um, he said up to three months. That doesn't mean three months, but up to three yeah. months. So what, what you're saying though is what he's basically saying is do this long fast, like seven days or but like you said, under supervision to clean That's yourself. the impression I was getting. Short-term yes. fast will not get you to the point where you can then start testing foods. Right. So he says... Um, you need a diet that's high in whole foods, fruits and vegetables, low in oils of all kinds, and that includes animal fat. And remember that an even lean meat is up to 30% animal fat. Mm -hmm. So muscle tissue has fat in it. You cannot get animal protein that doesn't have fat in it. That's not a thing. Right. So um, that, that's something to consider. Um, dairy is the most troublesome. Over and over in the article I read, it talked about how dairy, cheese, very hard, very inflammatory. And if you have an, are having an overly inflamed issue, whether it's arthritis or, or leaky gut or whatever, dairy is likely a culprit. Mm -hmm. um, so McDougal suggested go plant-based. And if you don't see any response in two weeks, then also remove wheat and corn. So that was his suggestion. Start with plant-based and then remove. And again, if you don't want to fast to get the like quick start, just you may have to wait a little longer to see results. Mm -hmm. um, he said you could also do, rather than fasting, do what he calls an elimination diet, which is eat only things like sweet potatoes, brown rice, non-citrus fruits, green and yellow vegetables for two weeks. So eat only those. What is that? How many foods is that? One, two... Well, non-citrus fruits, I guess there's several non-citrus fruits. Three, four, five things. So sweet potatoes, brown rice, non-citrus fruits, green and yellow vegetables for two weeks. So that's basically clear your system out of everything for two weeks and then slowly add one food at a time. So eat those things plus one thing and, you know, for a little while and see how that goes. And there's more. He has a thing called 12 Days to Dynamic Health that um, it's on his website that you can go and check out that, ha that helps you understand the elimination diet and how he runs through it. He also runs programs at his, in his California facility where, you know, he does the whole fasting thing. Now he's the rice diet, right book? Starch. starch, starch solution. The starch yep. solution. That's, That's his book, the starch solution. Right. Yeah. And he fed rice was like the main. And he, like I said, he is hard. Yeah, he's extreme. Core. Yeah. I mean, do he's not play. He's probably more hardcore than Esselstyn, who is pretty hardcore. Yeah. Esselstyn is no oil, right. no oil. Is Esselstein um, and but McDougal Esselstein is I want kinder. I was gentler. gonna say more um, not humane but more compassionate. Yeah, compassionate yeah. is a good way. McDougal is just like this is the fact. You're an idiot if you don't do it. Right. So McDougal's, you might be an idiot if you do, but yeah. <laughs> McDougal's a little bit harsh. He yeah. is, but uh, I mean his stuff works. The yeah. science, the science that he puts out is really good. So. Um, but yeah, I thought that was super interesting about inflammation. I know, I mean, I have, sometimes I wake up and my hands are stiff and I'm, I have to start paying attention. Like what am I eating the day prior to when I wake up and have stiff hands? Like what, it, what is causing that? And you know what, we were talking about it the other day. We are not as strict as, as we, we were, were when we first started. Like I blame the pandemic. Is that what you're going to blame? I, I blame the pandemic. Yes. <sighs> I'm going to blame you and your potato chip, your tortilla chips. That's what uh, I'm going to say. I have a He has a carbohydrate chip, uh, problem. Complex carbohydrates are my thing, you know. I've known and it, add uh, salt to him, forget it. Yeah. He's I'm all over like, it. Uh, and I wouldn't have a problem with it except for the amount of oil. And we do, like we read the ingredients and we get the healthiest options, but they're still And I used to make more food. popcorn. I'm not really making as much. You're not popcorn, as making as much. Because you don't popcorn. eat the popcorn. I don't. So if I make the popcorn then you're not tempted to eat it. Yeah. But yeah. popcorn also you make it, you know, in the air fryer, so there's not or the air popper. Right. That's so not an air fryer, air like popper. That. So there's nothing in it. I mean, you use soy sauce on it. So soy Arminos. sauce and um, the, the, she made this wing dust. taco wing dust. So. Yeah, the recipe for that's on the website, yeah. wing dust. So anyway, that's what I have today. That's I'm it. not seeing, let me, oh, I guess I didn't, I have to make sure I turn on chat. Where is it? Here it is. Make sure I'm not I'm missing any questions. Nope, looks like we're good. So, all right. 
That's what I have for today. That's it. Do you have anything you want to add to them? I don't. I puppy dog went stuff. to sleep. That's she nice. She went to sleep. She said, you guys ignore me. I'm ignoring you. Fair enough. Fair All enough. right. Let's let them go then. Okay. So with that, we'll say, eat real food. Mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a good night, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you next month. Send me your questions.